Hello, my name is Anshika and welcome to my course Understanding Microsoft Azure Blob Storage. So in this session, we will learn about what is an Azure storage account. After that, we will look into the basics of Blob Storage and then we will examine the features of Blob Storage and what are the different kinds of Blobs. And finally, what are the access tiers available for the Blob? So firstly, let's learn what is an Azure Storage Account. An Azure Storage Account is a Microsoft managed cloud service solution that is highly durable, available, scalable and redundant storage. An Azure Storage Account contains all your Azure Storage data objects like blobs, files, queues, tables and disks. The Storage Account provides a unique namespace for your Azure Storage data and it is accessible from anywhere in the world over the HTTP or the HTTPS. And every storage account must belong to a Azure resource group. And a resource group is basically a logical container for grouping your Azure services. A storage account is a parent container in your subscription and the blob service is created inside this. Depending upon the storage account you have chosen, it can contain the blob storage, file storage, table storage and queue storage. And now let's go into the detail of storage account. So a blob storage is an object storage solution that is optimized for storing massive amount of unstructured data like documents or binary data like image files or video or even virtual machine images. What is a file storage? A file storage is similar to a blob storage but it supports the SMB protocol. An SMB protocol means that you can attach the storage to the virtual machines for the read or write access. And what is a table storage? A table storage is a NoSQL data store that allows you to store massive amount of structured non-relational data and it is a good choice for web applications. And last is queue storage. Queue storage is used to store and retrieve messages. So it helps in building asynchronous reliable applications that are based on messages. All of these different services share feature of parent storage account and are built as a group via the storage account. And these storage account services expose a REST based endpoint to the internet for accessing data and administrating the different services. And these URLs are used to communicate with each service. Among these, we will be only discussing about the blob storage and rest we will discuss later. Now we understand that a blob storage service is created within a storage account. Let's talk about the types of blobs that gets stored in a blob service. The term blob is an acronym for binary large object. So a blob itself can be any kind of file, a document, image, video, VM disk or a database. But when uploading a file, you need to categorize the type of file and how that file will be treated in Azure. One thing to note here is that once a blob is created in Azure, you cannot change its type. And now let's discuss about the types of blob. The blob is categorized into three types, blob blob, append blob and page blob. Blob blobs are the blobs that are broken down into smaller units called blocks. And these are used to store text and binary data with a maximum size of about 4.7 terabytes. Blob blobs are made up of blocks of data that can be managed individually. And what are append blobs? Append blobs are made up of blocks that are optimized for append operations. Append blobs are ideal for scenarios in which we want to add some data to an existing blob. And what are page blob? Page blob is used to store random access files up to 8 terabytes in size. Page blobs store virtual hard disk drives and serve as the disk for Azure virtual machines. Now let's discuss about the various access tiers for blob that will be used while creating the blob storage account. So 
What are access tiers for a Blob Storage account? Azure Storage provides different options for accessing Blob Blob data based on the usage patterns. By selecting the right access tier for your needs, you can store Blob Blob data in a most cost efficient manner. And the Blob Storage access tiers are divided into three types. First, Hot Storage access tier. Second, Cool Storage access tier. And the third is the archive storage access tier. So what is a hot storage access tier? Hot access tier is optimized for frequent access of objects in a storage account. Accessing data in the hot access tier is the most cost efficient while the storage costs are higher. The cool access tier is optimized for storing large amount of data that is infrequently accessed and is stored for at least 30 days. Storing data in the cool access tier is the most cost efficient but accessing data is more expensive. The archive access tier is available only for individual block blobs. The archive tier is optimized for data that can tolerate several hours of retrieval latency and that will remain in archive tier for at least 180 days. One thing to note here is that changing the access tiers from hot to cool, for example, will incur charges. Now let's look into the Microsoft Azure storage redundancy and why it is required. Microsoft Azure Cloud Provider has data centers all over the world within different regions and every region can have one or more multiple zones and they are isolated from each other. And each zone can have one or more multiple data centers with independent power, cooling and networking. Now, think about if Microsoft data center goes down. What happens if the entire region and their data center also goes down? And what will happen in case of the disaster? So to solve this business problem, Azure Local Redundant Storage, Zone Redundant Storage, Geo Redundant Storage and Read Access Geo Redundant Storage has helped us. The locally redundant storage helps to replicate our data in the same data center and it is the low cost data redundancy technique and it provides at least 99% of durability of objects over a given year and this is helpful when we can easily reconstruct the data even in case of data loss. The zone redundant storage helps us for excellent performance, low latency and replicates our data synchronously across three storage clusters in a single region. ZRS offers durability for storage of objects at least 99% over a given year. The next is the geo redundant storage. It helps us in replicating our data to another region which is far hundreds of miles away from the primary region. It provides at least 99% of durability of objects over a given year. But the data will be available to be read only if the Microsoft initiates a failure from the primary to the secondary region. And last is the read access geo redundant storage. It is based on the GRS, but it also provides the option to read from the secondary region regardless of whether the Microsoft initiates a failover from the primary to the secondary region. Now we have learned about the various terms used in the Azure Blob Storage account. So in the next session, we will go in detail about how to create an Azure Blob Storage account on the Azure portal. Thank you. And in case of any questions, please comment.